This is Beyond Perception, where it's all about breaking out of limited perception and waking up to our inherent creative genius, our human potential, our true self. I'm Simon Rilling, and I have the true pleasure to speak today to Charlotte Greenwood, a visual artist, filmmaker, storyteller, and entrepreneur. She's originally from London and immigrated to Canada at the age of 33. As a visual artist, her medium of choice is painting and drawing. She also has been working in the entertainment business for 20 plus years, where she makes sets for films and TV shows, and also worked on many productions as a prosthetic makeup artist, making creature effects for films like Harry Potter and The Philosopher's Stone, Brothers Grimm, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, James Bond and several of the X-Men movies. And her mission is to develop unity within humanity and work towards a world of appreciation and connection using storytelling and creativity as a channel of communication and the conduit to change and transformation. Welcome, Charlotte. It's a true pleasure. <laughs> Hi. Nice to be here. <laughs> Thanks uh, for the invitation. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really a pleasure. The both of us, um, we participated in a workshop about creativity and I listened to you talking about your creative process and then just by pure accident, I stumbled upon your webpage your portfolio and it was really intriguing and uh, interesting and uh, like, like a sense outside the box thinking and also um, amazing artwork so I, I am and I was so curious to hear about your journey and what I sense and you might correct me uh, if I'm wrong creativity seems to be something very important to you and like a red line through through your life has that <laughs> Have you always been creative? Yes. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, since the start, I, I don't know where it. I don't know where it comes from, really. I mean, my, my parents don't really have anything to do with um, what I do. Like my sister and I both work. She's a, a film director, and and I work in in film uh, in a different part of filmmaking, but. Um, and I'm a visual artist as well. I don't know how it happened that both, you know, me and my sister <laughs> fell into a creative field like that um, with parents that were, they were shop owners. And um, so, yeah, <laughs> it was quite funny. But um, yeah, creativity from a very early age uh, was a big part of my life. And, uh, and I was fortunate, actually, that my parents, despite their kind of grumbling and uh, trying to steer me in a direction more kind of secure, financially secure uh, direction. Um, they still supported me in my art and very much so. And they um, helped me, you know, get into one of the best art schools in, in England. And um, so that was my first kind of step in that direction. But um, yeah, since then, I don't know, I, I just, I just followed followed my intuition and um, it was clear to me from from the start that I wanted to be an artist of of some some kind and um, the more I go into this direction I realize that an artist is a very general description and it can be whatever you want really it's a uh, in my interpretation of it and in my perspective if you like it's it's a way of living and it's a mindset. And um, for me, creativity is, it comes through me and I, I translate it and it becomes my, my flavor and, and my essence it, it is what I, I give back to it and then I pass it on. And so it's, that's how I see the whole creative process really. It's like, it's a, it's a flow, a flow of energy and, it really does come for me it comes in waves and it, it's it's like a big flow of creativity can come through and, and i can feel it coming um it's uh, it's energetic as well and um i feel that my energy kind of changes as it comes and then just letting it letting it come through me and and just embracing you know um when it does come and and just and enjoying it the process and and if if it comes in in the form if it comes through me and and i i decide to do painting then i'll i'll do painting and if 
if it comes through me and I'll decide to do writing, I'll do writing. And it seems like that's how it's going for me now. And, and before I had a, a much more kind of uh, logical, or not logical, but like very much more kind of boxed uh, way of seeing being an artist. And I'll be like, oh, I'm a painter. I'm, I'm you know, I, I paint and, and that's how I'm an artist. But it, it's, it's as big as your imagination can lets it be, you know. Um, that's how I see creativity and that's how I see being an artist. It's a, it's a life choice. Um, that's definitely um, what I decided. I chose to be an artist very early on. And I think my journey, um, taking me through being a painter and then um, finding my way into filmmaking and, um, and, and that route and sculpting and all of that kind of stuff, um, that taught me a lot about uh, creating a project and uh, research and development, how to develop my own language. I think that's the whole basis really is, is um, you know, understanding that you as an artist, you have a language and it's a, a different language than the verbal language. Um, well, no, that's not true actually, because people, well, people, other artists, performing artists, they use the language to, to express their creativity through words and spoken word but it's still they'll have their flavor that'll they'll add to to the words so i think that in essence it's it's about discovering your own language and creating your own language that you then add to creativity and then um and then pass it on into the world um for other people to be inspired by to learn from and and, and uh, enjoy hopefully <laughs> um so yeah and then um, through working in cinema and film, uh, I learned a lot just about space, like working with space and working with light and like that we use a lot of textures. And so it's, I don't know, from, from my um, journey, uh, you know, if we're talking about art in particular, uh, observation is, is the key, really. That's where you start. And um, observation, you start, you know, learning about how the world looks, how the world, uh, how, you know, how physical, the physical world is affected by light and, and how it exists in space and so on. And so um, the start for me was very much, um, a lot of the work that I was doing was very real and high, like I explored hyperrealism and, and went really into the details of things. And um, I still have that uh that element that exists in my work uh quite he heavily and just working in cinema the, the stuff that we we make in cinema like the the sets and in prosthetic makeup it's it's always very uh real it has to create uh even if the the creature isn't real but it has to look real and and you're bringing something into a, a new reality so if you're building a set then then basically you know for example if the set is a building, then it has to look like a building. So you're, you're always dealing with reality, um, whether you're removing it from its original reality and putting it into a new illusionary reality, you're still dealing with, you know, um, recreating something that is believable. So it's suspension of, uh, it's creating an illusion, a suspension of reality. <laughs> yeah, it's and that's that's what I see as being the the magic of uh, of movie making. One of the parts of the magic of movie making, you know, and it's creating worlds that are so real. You know, you're going, you you're telling a story, and you're bringing the viewer and the the audience into into this world, um, which I find fascinating. So it's a, it's a very extremely elaborate um, way of storytelling, but it's still, it's a, it's storytelling. So yeah, all of those things um, were, were a big part of my exploration of, uh, and development as an artist. And, um, you know, it goes far into teamwork and deadlines, working with deadlines and, and all of that kind of stuff. I transfer into my own uh, practice, which really helped me, you know, with the, uh, my own projects and and being able to set myself deadlines and set myself goals and a structure to work in so that you know my creativity doesn't just get lost in oblivion and, and chaos <laughs> which if you don't put a structure around it it does you know because you have to let it flow um 
through say like you know you have to establish the riverbanks otherwise the, the water will just flow everywhere um so yeah <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, so many questions. <laughs> Dude, I'm here for you. <laughs> yeah, uh, one mm. of the things uh, which uh, which I just understood is that like creativity or like there's a form of energy which is mm. coming through you. And um, mm. um, so my first question is like, um, you also said that you went to art school. So mm. was like the process of art school like was it about being able to tap into that energy or like or, or um um like or in other words like if if you're just like if you're expressing something which 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 is there like do you still need to master the skill of actually painting like like or like um is is there practice needed to to um to create art if it's like just an expression of of energy coming through you like it, does my question make sense yeah it does well if what i'm understanding is that um do you need to have skills like practical skills mm -hmm. to 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 learn before you know going into doing art is that what you you're asking yes kind of because i looked at your portfolio and you just also mentioned there are paintings drawings which seem so real <laughs> very mm -hmm. detailed like mm -hmm. a photography mm -hmm. and my first my, my, my first instinct would be well, to create something mm -hmm. that detailed that realistic this person must have practice ten thousands of hours like mm -hmm. to really be able to create something um which which is really difficult to differentiate from reality yeah yeah in that sense yes but that was my choice um and i naturally fell into that um and and I, there was one lesson in art school um the one that i went to chelsea college of art and um central st martin's uh one of the tutors that i had there um left a little nugget with me and it was all about um you know going towards abstraction and he said you start with recording that's observation and you're copying you're just recording what you're seeing mm -hmm. um and then <clears throat> and then you go into interpretation and then you go into abstraction so it's like a that's the structure that i was taught and and that and that was just in one of the classes. There was other other classes where um, there would be a tutor. He he played in the day when we had cassettes. He had like several cassette players next to each other, and he'd play mm. different things on each one. And it was to scramble our um, our mind to and to stimulate it and to just like get us to to break out of our daily structure. And and that class was all about abstract and and getting into um, our imagination and, and, and expression and, and trying to free our expression, the, the channel between what's inside in, a, in our inside world and, and getting it out into the outside, the tangible world, right? <clears throat> so, and there's different, there's different, um, there's lots of different ways you can do art. Like you can do art, make art in any way. And that's the thing that makes it so difficult to teach. Um, so, I mean, <clears throat> at art school, the one that I went to, it was very heavy on conceptual art. And so I didn't really, and, and, and the, one, the classes I was telling you about, they're all from Central St. Martin's when I was doing my foundation course, uh, which is a course that's uh, three, three semesters and you just, you cover all elements of art. It's for people to get a taster, you know, a little bit of photography, a little bit of figure drawing, a little bit of sculpture. And, and then you can see, okay, which area do I want to spe specialize in? <clears throat> and then you take in, you go into your, your uh, course, which is, uh, you know, three years long, uh, a, a bachelor's degree in arts, and um, you choose your, your specialization. Um, and then when I was in doing my, my bachelor's degree, it was, I, I decided to go for painting. And then <clears throat> when I was in painting department, I was like, I, I felt really stuck on, on the, the, the 2D surface. And so I reapplied and I thought to myself, shit, if I do sculpture, I'll have a lot more 
practical skills that I can then take into the workforce. So it was more of a, a decision that was um, related to, you know, taking advantage of the workshops that I had available. And I realized that shit, after my four years at art school, I'm not going to have access to those technical workshops. And, um, and I wanted to learn about bronze casting and about woodworking, about casting, about metal working. So I took advantage of all of that because they had all of those facilities there. Um, some people didn't, you know, some people did installation art and they just used, say like there was one girl, she used furniture and she found furniture and used that to make her sculptures with. And it was a, a lot more um, uh, kind of conceptual, you know, she didn't really have any, mu didn't have much kind of transformation in her process apart from in a conceptual way. Um, I did, I had a lot, and um, there were other people that did too, um, who did a lot of woodwork and it was completely diverse. <clears throat> but my point is that my choice uh, on my journey was yes, I chose to, um, le to uh, train my observation and I, f I feel uh, if you understand observation and you can, copy something just the the um the action of of copying it and the the process of copying something you have to make millions of de decisions in and train and you're training your hand eye movement your hand eye coordination to such a subtle degree um that then you can you understand space and you understand form in 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 a way that then you can abstract it but it's a different way of working because in 2016 when I had a, a complete change a shift of, of style I was like I felt like I was stuck in in the hyperrealism style and and I felt you know um, like I was in a straitjacket kind of thing it was too structured and too tight and and the the amount of expression that I could let go let come let come through uh, doing a painting that was hyper real was I felt a bit stunted so then I, I discovered um, I went into a different <clears throat> thread where which is the series on my website called imaginary and it, it was all um, straight from my imagination I just started with a, a piece of paper a blank piece of paper I had no plan I just had music um, and time and I just took a pencil and started drawing and let the line go and whatever came out came out and then I just started to explore aquarelle because I, I, I found using aquarelle and watercolor in the traditional way uh, I find it as a very difficult medium to use because you can't make mistakes really without it looking bad <laughs> or like mm -hmm. you know um, I, I find it's, it's a it's a beautiful um, way of working aquarelle and I never really explored it I'm more of an oil painter and um, so and and aquarelle is, is a lot about bringing letting the light shine through from the paper um so anyway so i took i got got my aquarelles out and started to just color in these these drawings and and it became the series it's like a very light-hearted playful uh naive as well and there was no um intention to make anything look real really it was just really exploring my imagination and and, and letting it just flow out as as raw as possible. And so it was a completely different process from, you know, having the structure for like, say the paradox of consumerism and the age of mm -hmm. new Brock, which was the series of uh, oil paintings that I think is on the, the first mm -hmm. part of my page. Um, and which were very planned paintings though. I mean, I took, I did the beginning of that project was all about, um, you know, creating visions and I use, visions to establish the paintings and then I'll like take my vision that I've had you know around a subject for example this one was super um consumerism um mm. and I would just I would come up with uh, a vision which I would say like if you put all of them together that they kind of coming from a world that there's similarities between all of them and um so so then with that vision I'd create uh a plan and a, and a drawing and then I'd go uh, with a seven layer technique that that they used to use in the 
in, in the time of the Baroque and the Renaissance, um, they would have a drawing and then they would, from that drawing, they'd put little dots uh, in, in all of the lines and then they'd place that on their canvas. And then with a, a puff bag full of graphite powder, they'd just tap on the, on the drawing and, and it would go through these the little holes and leave uh, a trace on the canvas. And then from that trace, they would go with an ink pen and draw the lines because the ink doesn't come off when you do oil painting. And then from there, they'd establish their monochrome painting. And then from there, they'd add, start adding color, like gradually, gradually, gradually. And, and, and that whole process is such a laborious process. And it, it ends up, you end up creating a painting that's very high quality and it's gonna last for a very long time. But because you, you've taken all the care to like really establish all the different layers and the foundations and so on and so on. So it, it's, it's a completely different process from just like getting into your raw imagination and just, or from into your heart really, and, and getting it to come out and recording it as it's coming out. Um, and just, and, and not thinking and just really trying to get out of your way um, and just let, you know, really connect with your, with what you're drawing on and, um, get in touch with your heart and and that is a completely different practice there's no planning it's it's you know there's no pre-drawing or anything um so yeah it's um i can't remember what i was talking about now <laughs> like where we're we coming from but um yeah it's like if you're doing something that's abstract it, it's not mandatory that you you have to uh learn a skill of you know a technical skill I, I don't think it's mandatory, but I think it's very useful because it gives you really good understanding of uh, the physical world and um, and then how to interpret it. Because, well, anyway, that was my journey. So, you know, there's other people I'm sure that will completely disagree and say, no, no, no you don't need to do that. And and they're right. They're right too. You know, that's just my my perspective. So. <laughs> that, that sounds it, it's just so interesting and was exactly what i was wondering about are there different processes <laughs> to the different arts yeah. you're creating yeah. then also a question is it possible to be very good in creating art for example photorealistic paintings but not being creative in a sense of having access to intuition like mm. are these like is this the one thing more like mm -hmm. a craft being mastered over mm -hmm. many years and the other the other one is a, is in connection to what is there mm -hmm. already and you're just like a channel of it mm -hmm. yeah i think that's a, a very good question yeah it, it, i think it is true it is possible to be a technician and um yeah i think that's a, an, an interesting question from the point of view that yeah it doesn't mean necessarily that if you're an excellent technician that you have uh, developed your creativity necessarily you're you're you you're developing a skill that's a really difficult it's a it's an unusual it's a yeah it's a difficult thing to quantify to to define i think to uh you know say what's the difference because yeah i mean i i, I can't i could say that i'm a a good technician but I, uh, firstly what's a good artist or what's a good technician but mm -hmm. like in terms of if we're if we're qualifying that in terms of you know copying something and make it look making it look real to our eye then yes you can be a really good replica replication artist or technician um and if you're going to take that further and get into your creativity then what you're deciding what you're choosing to um, to draw or paint or recreate uh, could be then taken into a, the next, you know, the next realm, which is the, being creative and exploring a, a world and cr and creating a world, um, and not necessarily just a re but it's all in. It depends, I, I guess, in the context. Maybe it's we could say that <clears throat> it depends on the con the subject matter. You know, like. If you're copy, copying a car, then the car already, already exists and it's a thing that people drive in and you're just copying something that already exists. But if you're 
like say for example what I was referring to before in, in filmmaking where we're creating a world there's elements of that world that could already exist um, depending on the story that that the the director and the, and the scriptwriter have created and the production designer and, and so on the whole team and and so the but they're also taking it into a story that it doesn't exist the story doesn't exist for example i mean yeah we're, t we're not talking about documentaries or anything but um yeah for, say for example uh, uh, harry potter i watched uh, harry potter yesterday night actually just uh, out of interest i haven't seen it for for years and um and and it was a, it, it was an amazing feat of creativity to create the world of 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 harry potter and uh, you know what jk rowling created through her writing and of course there's elements of reality that are in there like you know houses and and so on and cars <clears throat> um but they're in a different context and so yeah i think that context has a lot to do with it and um and and that's where and storytelling has a lot to do with it too so yeah i think that that may be the difference between what you you were asking uh between a technician and a and a creative. <laughs> yeah. um, what I'm also thinking about is, do you think every everybody has ability to be creative? Is that something which everybody has access to? Or are there just a few selected people who have this ability and others have other gifts? Or is this something mm -hmm. everybody can access, but most of us, we haven't? No, I think everybody has that that ability. We're we're all creative beings. At the beginning, there was a test, uh, a study that that happened uh, years ago. I can't remember the name of the study, but they took a group of kids. Uh, I think they were pre five or pre seven year olds or something, and um, they were testing them for creativity and to see how uh, creativity carried on through the life of a group of people. And they noticed that creativity was in huge in the pre seven pre pre five pre seven age group and then after that going into adolescence it drops and then after that going into you know adulthood you know when they get got to 30 and they, they still were following the same group of people it dropped like drastically so from that i think i understand that and just from my own experience you know if you don't use it you lose it and I think we all born with we're all born with creativity and we're all born as conduits for for this you know creativity this energy you know tapping into intuition we're all we're we're all capable of it and it's just the choices that you know the choices that we make that take us either away from it or in in you know with it and um I think that there's so much pressure on human beings to live in the society that we've created to um to have money and to you know to survive some people don't even you know get to the money phase they're just like literally looking to survive creating a shelter you know that but um i think that there's so many things that can distract us from our creativity and um, that that establish like impose structures upon us and um, that then make it very difficult for us to, to to use our creativity or to even maybe consciously want to um, and a lot of people don't even think creativity is important but I find there's a lot of adults that end up in adulthood thinking oh I wish I could draw or you know I wish I could sing or you know and there there's a, a kind of almost a regret that exists uh, in many people that they didn't continue with that or they think that they don't know you know they they i'm i i, I hear a lot of people saying oh i'm crap at art or mm -hmm. i can't draw you know i can't draw boom finished that's it <laughs> they shut the door you know all i can draw is a stick man or you know and it's it's just a question of they've stopped they stopped that process of development and 
um, you know, for whatever reason, they had a family, they had a job or, you know, this, that and the other, they just chose a different path and, and that was it. But I think more and more now, <clears throat> the activity is being seen as um, a very useful skill and a useful, um, a useful tool in big corporations, big companies where, you know, it's, it's about problem solving, really creativity that's like where you 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 find you you're inventing it's it's very related to inventing and um you know creating solutions for things coming up with new ideas and it's in my in my perception i see it as you can't not have it <laughs> it's just it's it's really really important and um for what you know for whatever we want to create in our future forever for whatever we want to create in our future that's it you know we're creating a future we're creating the next thing or the next uh, company the next object the next i don't know product wh whatever you're still creativity is, is always there it's very important so i think for me that's part of my wisdom that i want to pass on to the next generations is is to inspire people to continue that you know and to to keep that in their life and I think one of your questions when you uh, sent me that form um, was what's your most uh, beneficial habit or ritual or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that, that would, but I would include that in, in there. It would be, um, yeah, keeping exercising my creativity. Um, and I do that in my job, even if I'm not, you know, um, if I call it, you know, a job, cause I'm earning money when I do filmmaking. Um, I use my creativity every single day, you know, and whether it's to do with what I'm actually making, like if it's a, a part of the decor or not, or if it's just part of setting up the space <laughs> to work in, you know, there's things that get in your way and you have to make decisions and choices and, and, and make, make a, an area to work in that's efficient. And sometimes you don't have the tools that you need and you have to find a way of creating the desired look or texture or this, that and the other with something that you don't have and so you know you have to be creative and um so yeah it's uh, it, it goes beyond just painting or you know making music or this that and the other it's it's really like a skill it's, it's about it's about finding solutions and um so yeah i sometimes describe myself that instead of an artist i'm a problem solver <laughs> and What would be your recommendation to someone who doesn't define themselves as very creative? Would be uh, would like to be more creative, or even learn to draw or paint, or mm. learn learn to solve better pro problems? Yeah. What What would be your suggestion? Like, do you have a process someone can start, like to to tap in? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, there's there's a well, there's books out there on creativity. Uh, but I mean, I have done, I've offered people courses and I've taught people uh, art. Um, I, I ran earlier this year, a, a creativity challenge where, you know, people were invited to for Thursday, well, the, the pilot of that program was a 30 day long. I found that it was a bit too long for most people to stick to the program. Um, for that long but that, that uh, would be about painting or drawing or how? it was uh, actually just keeping it really simple it was about drawing and um, just using drawing as the the vehicle to extract uh, creativity and to to tap into your creativity and really like explore your way of expressing and some people yeah some people did it and they weren't they weren't like necessarily artists Uh, as such um, and they still enjoyed it and um, there was other people that were artists who I actually work with <laughs> and um, they they joined me on the project and yeah and it was just like two weeks of fun and um, every day there'd be like a little a different intention for example it would take you on a journey from um, like drawing uh, with music drawing with your opposite hand drawing with your eyes closed um, And then, you know, it's, it's about shaking up the, uh, the security that you've established, like the, the usual and making it unusual. And so it's tricking yourself and making you, you find solutions to 
new parameters. And there was one person who really found it difficult because it really pushed up against some of his, you know, his boundaries and, and, and the fact and showed him how much, you know, uh, structure he, he was working in. And, and when you take away, you know, that, that structure or you, you, you change the structure because there's always some kind of structure, but if you change that structure and you make it something that you're not used to, then it really makes you work and makes you fight and makes you explore. And I think that's like a, a good, um, it makes the couple, you know, like exploration and problem solving. They're like part of the creative process, I think. Um, so that was kind of what I was using as uh, my <clears throat> triggers in, in the course where, you know, taking away security and going in and, and kind of creating an environment for people to, that they had no choice to explore the unknown. <laughs> and so, yeah, for me, that was a, that was a big part of, of that course. So, yeah, I mean, they can, people can contact me, people can go to uh, take a, a course in art school or they can read some books. There's thousands of stuff on videos on YouTube that could help, you know, anybody, anybody, you know, or if you just want to do it on your own and, and explore, then, then just pick up a piece of paper and a pencil and, and, and start drawing, you know, just whatever comes <laughs> out of your mind and don't judge it, just do it. And that's the thing. Like are people that really judge themselves, and that's what stops them. They think, oh, it should look like that. And there's no should. Uh, it, it's just, that's, it just is. And it doesn't, it's not bad or it's not good. It's just, it just is. And if you try and stay in that mindset of it's just is, then it's going to be really useful for you to, to explore your creativity. If you, if you judge what you're doing, forget it. You're, you, it, you're going to stop, you know? And that's the key, I think. That's one one of the keys is is not to judge what you're doing and just like keep going. It's like, how would you like it if someone would judge you and you, you knew that you were being judged? Imagine what creativity feels like when you judge it, <laughs> and then you just ignore it. It's like hmm, creativity is going to sit in the corner and be like really pissed off, <laughs> and it's like not going to come back to you. So yeah, like treat it like it's your friend. You know, if, if, if you don't, if you don't judge your friend, you know, it's going to be, it's going to stay with you and, and, you know, be, be your friend. So, uh, you know, that's one way of looking at it. <laughs> it, it resonates a lot. I have been personally, I've been painting like to the age of 13, 14. I, will, I had also mm. arts as a major in school and then life changed and it was all about achieving like no mm. have not not having any time for um hobbies yeah or yeah. It's, it's something with with no purpose <laughs> like, from that mindset and just this year i i rediscovered all paintings and i was like oh like that, that wasn't so bad yeah like and, and remembering also like i spent a lot of time when i was young painting every day and I, I cannot say that I have been painting a lot now, but a, a couple of times I started painting and also two weeks ago, we went to a creative, creative expression, like lesson. Mm. And we were just handed colors, literally it was just shades of blue. Mm. And then it was like put on music and it was about like painting what you feel. And initially it was okay. How can I start? Like, it needs to be good. Yeah? And at some point, like, That's oh, it. whatever. Like, I, <laughs> I just paint colors. And, like, <laughs> and, and there was this sense of almost tuning into some kind of, it was more like feeling or seeing colors and just like, just yeah. letting it flow and not, 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 like, that was the first time I got a sense of, what other painters or artists might be feeling. I don't know. Mm. Like, it was more like something was coming and it was, I, I was just like the vessel of it, even mm. though like, maybe the piece of art I created, it was not really um, aesthetic or 
yeah but but it's your really, judgment uh, yeah your but judgment. It, felt, it felt really good and and i like it it's now in, in my living room uh, oh, cool. on the wall and that was yeah. really a nice experience and it was make me think and uh, i i think at that time we already had spoken about the interview and i was like mm -hmm. mm, okay there's something else and mm -hmm. and when i look back to the last years i had no sense that this is existing and that's why i also was so curious to speak to you and get your perspective and also how possibly other people can 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 open this window up it felt mm -hmm. more like a door through mm -hmm. which you could see something else and mm -hmm. that's why i'm so curious to hear um mm -hmm. like, is it, what someone who is listening to this could do to um kind of mm -hmm. well, yeah i think that, that's a, yeah that's a really good um a good thing is the judgment that's that's a key thing not to judge what you're doing and just enjoy it and do you do you like do you never judge yourself or, do, or, or is, oh, it, I is do, it yeah or is it something you learned also well to, yeah and it's it's something i learned to be with and 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 it's not sometimes it's not a nice thing like i find myself i have you know like it's been tough for me recently to to get back into it and even with all the experience i've had you know and i sometimes go through periods where I'm thinking shit you're not an artist and I'm just like I'm judging myself you know oh, you're not an artist you don't even paint anymore and then <laughs> and this is like you know this, it's the battle it's a, it's a really a, it's, sometimes it's a battle with my own ego and sometimes it can be often you know it depends how you relate to your ego and how you recognize when it's trying to stop you from from doing what you love or doing like what you you're expressing your essence. And I think that's, for me, is, is, is a key of how I've chosen to live is to really be an expression of my, my essence and, and my purpose and, and discovering what that is, you know, and, and the more you do, the more you discover what that is. And, <clears throat> and it's not just like, Oh, I've discovered it. And that's it. It's like, it's a, it's con continual, a continuing process that you'll have, for the rest of your life and um and so yeah for me um sometimes i i, I go for, for a long time i haven't painted and this week i'd started to paint again because i had a whole bunch of values to do with you know the environment and not wanting to pollute the environment not wanting to add stuff to the world and and just thinking yeah painting every time I do a painting I'm adding something extra, something more to the world and, and another physical thing that, you know, and I was thinking, oh, the, you know, the environment, the environment, <laughs> try not to pollute the environment and so on. And, <clears throat> and I, I, I don't know, it's, I, I don't know what the, fi the final solution is or anything, but I, I started to feel not pain but not physical pain but just you know longing to to really paint and and I thought <laughs> just just do it and you know at least I'm doing oil paint it's not acrylic painting which is plastic um and you know just trying to use the minimum amount of toxic materials I mean doing my job in cinema we use a lot of toxic materials and at the end of a wrap, you know, there's uh, the film shoot and then most of the stuff that we create is scrapped, you know, and it, it ends up in the environment. So it, it, it's, um, it's a dilemma for me, you know, I stopped working in cinema in 2013 because it, as it was the, at the end of a very toxic job for me where we were using so many materials that were very, you know, nauseous and, and, I, I I just felt I needed to rest and have like re and recuperate recover from from all those years in cinema and I actually decided to follow my intuition and and I became a CrossFit coach for six mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. and then I and, and I found creativity in that field too you know and um, the way I um, coached people and um, and so on it was a completely different world than what I'd been working in before and then in 2018 I, I just 
I, I wanted to get back into something that was more creative and more, um, yeah, uh, yeah, physical, uh, physically using my skills as an artist. And, and so I, I took on, a, it was like an X-Men, one of the X-Men movies. And from then on, I stayed with it again. So I had a, a, a few years where I wasn't working in cinema and then I just got back into it. And um, I don't coach anymore as a CrossFit coach. It's just too, too many things to do at the same time. <laughs> um, and, and, and so, yeah. And then I was thinking the same, the same thing, like I'm now creating or participating in, in creating these decals that end up a lot of the time in landfills and, and so on. And so there's like a big conflict with my values um, because I'm a very uh, conscious about the environment and uh, I live a life where I make life choices where I, you know, I, I eat organic food. I, I try and eat local and uh, I try and minimize my garbage and so on and, and recycling and so on. But in the end, the thing, my purpose is storytelling as a storyteller is, is so, is so powerful and so much bigger than me. And I just have to do it. And, and so, <laughs> I, I'm kind of dealing with this conflict of my in my values of you know every time I make a piece of art that's a physical piece of art or a decor or something I'm contributing to you know something that's going into the environment and so yeah I'm I'm still dealing with that I haven't found you know the solution the ultimate solution or you know how how to stop it. <laughs> I, you know, I tried stopping it. I tried stopping painting and, and seriously, uh, I don't know. There's other, there's a lot of other things that I've chosen in my life that, <laughs> that are good for the environment. And so I'm like allowing myself to paint. <laughs> and so then, yeah, I got back into painting and, and, uh, and so it, I'm, all that to say, you know, that it's not, a uh, it's not a straight line. <laughs> it's a very up and down kind of roller coaster journey of with my creativity and so on. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting one. Saying like, you know, are you an artist or going back to your question? And drawing and painting is this something you are doing for yourself, or are you selling your art to, or? Yeah. Is producing art on demand or is that more mm. like a private all of the above <laughs> Everything. okay <laughs> all of the above yeah i've done uh, a lot of artwork for myself and um in 2008 actually uh i i'd been in cinema for already a long time and uh, it was fresh i was kind of fresh in canada i moved to canada in 2005 and and um and, and, and I was thinking, oh, I want to move out of the business and um, be an artist full time. And after a very lucrative job in uh, Toronto, I came back and I had enough money saved up after those, those four months or three months working on that contract to actually take off a sabbatical year. So I, I took off a year and I paid my own way. I didn't have a grant or anything. I just like, used all the money that I saved up and um to to be a painter and uh, and that's where i created that series uh, the paradox of consumerism and the age of new bark and um yeah i sold a few of those paintings but i still i still have some of them and uh i had a whole bunch of exhibitions um so yeah that was mostly just that was off my own back it was something i was passionate about and i wanted to explore uh the subject of consumerism the whole like mach machine that we've created and uh, consumerism was was a created thing um and it's still it still exists obviously um yeah. in a very very may, big way may i ask you to describe quickly w what is visible on those paintings uh, be <laughs> <laughs> to, to those listening to to mm. it, uh, be I, I will add the link and resources to the to the, the mm. show notes of this episodes in any case but okay. those paintings are incredible and also for me <laughs> i was thinking on the one side um, I was impressed by the quality of the drawing, even mm. though I, I have not really experienced 
in that. But on the other hand, I also thought there's really a depth of thinking behind <laughs> of, mm. of, yeah, visualizing problems we are having in our societies in a very mm. profound way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and sorry, did you want to finish or? Yeah, I, I, there was one, one picture. It was, um, I was a very massive lady being mm. held up by um, by the world's population, not in a very good uh, state, and that 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 really made me think because um, you could find a lot of realizations in that painting, and so I was also curious to to hear about your worldview or what what was the rational behind behind that. Uh, like, what you also mentioned storytelling a couple of times what, what was the story you you intended to tell with that picture mm. um are you talking about the one that that's um with the whole pit of bodies under it yes exactly one one large lady yeah um, um, well, actually there's, there's two yeah. there's two figures mm -hmm. yeah there's two figures um in that painting they're making love on the on the sticks um the sticks is uh for me it's the symbol of something that's very precarious and, and the fact you know that the the two bodies that intertwined with each other and um they just have no idea of what what's going on around them uh, of what they're creating um and and the, how precarious their situation is inside their their ignorance um and down and underneath is just uh, full of bodies that are dead or in struggle um in a big pit and then there's like this big black hole and i guess that's sort of the a metaphor for society and like the mass of human humanity and and then there's one that's kind of standing up with wings um and coming out and getting out of the the mess and then the, at the top there's um there's cherubs that are that are kind of like they're symbolic of the new generations and they don't know what they're getting into and so and they're at the top of the painting i guess it's it's called the loss of innocence that painting and and so they're you know they're going to fall down eventually into their reality where the the two figures are making love on the sticks and be in that kind of pre precarious situation of either falling into the pit of death or you know coming out of it and being kind of enlightened if you like but that whole process is like losing their innocence and um falling down to earth <laughs> so yeah it's not it's there's a there's all and i what i i uh was wanting to create in those paintings was something that would be engaging visually to the viewer um, making sort of the ugly beautiful and um, because beauty is very captivating and um, so it was like and, and, and in that sense I found it relates to the whole consumerist process as well because uh, you know we're being captivated our attention is being captivated and what we're being captivated to do is to spend our money to purchase something or a service or whatever that whole system and me mechanism i found very fascinating um and so yeah the the paintings that i wanted to 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 design and create i wanted them to look really beautiful and have that quality that you picked up on that was also engineered into it you know the whole thing that i chose i chose to use the seven layer technique so that you know, and the and the surfaces that I created to make the paintings on, they're they're very prepared. They're very sh smooth, like really smooth. And um, because you know, some people like they they just want to paint directly onto the canvas, and and you can still see the canvas texture. I made those um, canvases really smooth, like eggshell, um, smooth with gesso, and then I'd sand down the gesso and put another layer of gesso and sand down that layer it's like so and it's a really nice layer a uh, nice surface to paint on um so that you know it, it adds to the quality and the preservation of the painting in the end as well 
um, so that it, the paint doesn't rot the canvas. So, you know, it goes, it goes into, you know, far in, in all the choices that I made. And, um, yeah, so in terms of the metaphor, it, yeah, it's called the loss of innocence. So, you know, it's really just in general about, you know, losing the innocence and that connection to your intuition and just like going into a precarious situation of being at the mercy of of the outside world and not being the driver of your your life and being stuck in you know ignorance not being aware all of those things um and then there's that that little figure at the at the bottom right which is you know the one that gets up and uh, and there's kind of hope that you know there's a choice there's an alternative <laughs> <clears throat> But it is, it's like a very precarious painting and uh, or vision uh, in that painting. And then uh, that one re relates to the big, uh, the rancid feast, <coughs> excuse me, which is a, it's a six by four painting. And uh, it has also got those, those big figures in and, mm. um, and it's re relating to greed, you know, um, not necessarily that I'm using the, the symbol of, you know, a big obese person as a symbol for greed, not that every single person who's obese in real life <laughs> is necessarily greedy, but that, you know, there's all sorts of other things that are associated with that. But in my world that I'm creating, that's what the choice of that image is. That's what it's for uh, as a symbol of greed. And it's just like, so that, you know, people in, in the who are suspended by those uh, sashes the, of material who are held up held up by the cherubs, which are the new generation uh, that are coming in. They're kind of um, holding up the the big fat people, and then underneath they're being fed by you know the big mass of society and all these people that are holding up the well. Actually, on the plates there's like junk food and so on. Um, but they've got all they they've got their eyes closed and it's the same thing they're, they're oblivious to their environment and what they're actually contributing to but the whole painting is in suspension and if you take away any element in that painting the whole thing falls apart so it's not putting necessarily the blame we're all contributing to this machine so we're not i'm not pointing the finger at any particular sector of society it's like i see it as one one big machine and we're all in different parts of of the machine and so we're all helping to keep this machine alive by by being in it and we're some of us are actually really stuck in it <laughs> so it's, it's like an, it's an interesting paradox and that's you know why i called the series the paradox of consumerism because it is a paradox it's you know we're kind of it's like goo we're stuck in it <laughs> um and 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 if you pulled out the the new generations then there'd be no there'd be no it, the machine would wouldn't work because we're feeding the economy with new blood right um if you took out the consumers there would be no there would be nothing left if you took out the the workers or the you know the ones that are feeding from beneath if you want um wouldn't work so you know that the whole thing is like this big machine and i found it actually quite beautiful it's like one of those things it's 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 beautiful in its grotesqueness <laughs> so again it was like making something that's uh -huh. yeah. in yeah. essence quite ugly but making it beautiful and and it is beautiful and it's in its perfection it's it's like a genius creation it's 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 beautiful and that's how i see perfection it's like perfection is everything it's like it's with its imperfect imper imperfection makes perfection it's like a yin and yang thing i don't see like mm -hmm. perfection being something as this flawless thing it's it's uh, complete so yeah uh, that would be kind of a, a mm -hmm. synopsis of what's behind the, those paintings yeah uh, thank you very much i will make sure <laughs> people have the chance to to see this <laughs> and um with yeah. your description it makes even more sense thank you so much one of the yeah. things i also know that you that that you're on your project or like project project you right mm. now and you uh before you also mentioned about like getting closer to your essence 
And mm. with what I understand also this new project is about like, like distilling the essence of people. And um, mm. I, I, I would love you to describe what this project is about and um, what you're intending to do. Mm -hmm. Um, it started in 2012, this project. Um, so it's, it's been a, a real labor of love. And I kind of stumbled upon the idea, or stumbled upon, like, I kind of created the idea out, out of a, a, a situation which arose when I went to visit my family. Um, and I ended up arguing with them for like four days out of the 10 days that I was there, or out of the week that I was there. And I was like, I came all the way over from Canada to see you guys and like all we're doing is arguing and I just thought to myself okay this is maybe because they don't know who I am anymore you know like we've been and I hadn't seen them for about you know three and a half years at, at that time and and I just thought maybe you know they don't know who my friends are they don't know really much about what I do in much depth um yeah we've kind of like grown apart our connection had kind of been diluted so I thought to myself, okay, well, maybe I could do uh, an art project that would be around, um, you know, showing them who my friends are, my people that had marked my life, and you know, that's where I started the the, the project mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. And it became about, okay, em embodying how, how did I become who I was, and and so I took the concept of an autobiography being my own autobiography and um and i thought you know incorporate all of the stories well not all of them but <laughs> a selection of the stories um that i shared with people um who contributed to who i've become and i feel you know when you look at who you've become simon or from you know everybody if you look into your back into your life and you think, oh, what are the key events that I've lived or the key people in my life who've taught me the the key things that have contributed to how, who I've become or who've contributed to the choices I've made um, to to take to get me where I am today. So that was kind of like the the, the essence behind uh, the, the the book and the and the project and the film and. Um, and and so I wanted to make originally it was a hundred people out of my life, but uh, I considered had marked my life, who had taught me key things, and that I shared really memorable moments with, um, and to make yeah to to do portraits of them. And I chose originally pencil and paper because it it was very accessible, and anybody could can draw on a piece of paper and so for me and for me it was like a challenge you know instead of using you know big technology and like this fancy stuff to make the artwork i wanted to make it really simple so the original uh, drawings were all on pencil with pencil on paper um and i found that an interesting challenge too um and then and then now recently it's just a uh, it's got more more and more involved in actually appreciating the essence of people at large and just maybe it's moving away from being my autobiography um particularly to really an exploration of of humanity and of the human being and 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 humanness <laughs> and and discover and exploring what that is you know and um, really enjoying discovering who people are and exploring who people are and what makes them, what's the essence of each person. And so, yeah, this year I started to do interviews like you um, on Zoom and just like um, asking people the questions, kind of uh, unified questions that, that I want to include their answers into the book um, because it's all about their stories that, you know how they see themselves um their main stories that they've lived in their life that they want to share with the world um and what they've learned from these experiences um and 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 something maybe if, if i know them you know what's a memorable experience that they, they've shared with with me and so it's you know kind of keeping it into that 
autobiography theme. But yeah, that's that's where it's it's kind of going. And and I thought also to um, to take it more at large to 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 speak in schools uh, around Canada to um, promote the project and to to share with with people. Um, you know, young adults to to share with them, you know, the power and the importance of really living in in line with your essence and your purpose, and to and, and what that make what that gives back to the world. Um, you know, because if you're living in in your essence and your purpose, and you're you're living your true nature, and you know who you are, who you are, you're more much more. You can contribute way more to humanity and. And it's way more simple way of living. It's so simple, seriously. Like <laughs> you're you're ha you're happier. You're not necessarily all the time happier, but it's it just like it flows way more easily. <laughs> so yeah, um, so yeah, that's where it's going. <laughs> yeah, in a in an answer. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. With with this podcast, I'm I'm experiencing possibly something similar. Mm -hmm. uh, with each conversation, it is like stepping into someone's world and mm -hmm. seeing the world through the other person's eyes. And that's super, super interesting. It's also leading me to appreciating like even more like that, that or understanding that each single one of us is special, <laughs> has special mm -hmm. gifts, a unique perspective. Mm -hmm. And And that in itself, it's already an incredible, incredible eye-opening experience for me doing this podcast. Um, mm. Besides the intention of um, um, like expanding our perspectives together, and mm. when you when you have those conversations, and I have seen drawings also on your webpage and your portfolio, and you are distilling or like um like the, the essence from what i understand into these drawings and but and also these drawings are you do you have a photography or something in front of you where you kind of um like draw from or and mm. what i want to ask is is the drawing different like with all the like um questions the interaction the conversation like But mm. when I look at the drawings, they seem very like photorealistic too. They, they, mm. they, um, um, long, long question, short. <laughs> How does the drawing change after like these questions and the interaction, even though for me, like not being familiar to like, it, it seems very photorealistic. Mm. Um, I, I don't know how, It change how the photo, how the drawings change because mm -hmm. I I don't have a drawing mm -hmm. yes. before and a drawing after but it it becomes something as a the the kind of the the end product if you like or um, yeah it becomes the drawing as a result of my interaction with these people and whatever that may be and and I think. Uh, I do start with a photo. I, I start with um, a photo. I usually take it on my cell phone, actually. It's like nothing fancy. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things that I, I really enjoyed about the, 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 the product, um, the project was just choosing to make it really simple. And so, yeah, taking a picture on my cell phone and just focusing more on the connection and the, more on seeing them than the technology of, you know, having a really fancy camera to take the, po the photograph and, um, and just the whole process of, of making the painting. And I spend, you know, 20, 25 hours with them, you know, not in, per not in person, but, you know, through their stories and through me spending time rendering their face and really, and what I find really interesting is, um, you know, when even on a picture you take with your camera, with your phone, it, it's still, it still shows you uh, an image of them and, and, their, and their history. And I see their history is, is, is ingrained in their faces, you know, their lines and their, their characteristics. And I find that that part of it is really, really uh, fascinating is that, you know, a, fa a human face 
is 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 a result of all those millions of choices we've made all the you know the, the hardships that we've lived all the amazing moments and it's it's all recorded in every cell of our body and so when you can see when you can observe it to that depth and really kind of get and tap into that and really start to see you know how their lines blend into each other or like you know if they've got more lines around their eyes or more kind of i don't know whatever it is if they've got you know a blemish here or you know if their face isn't symmetrical or you know all of those kinds of things there's always something behind it <laughs> and it's it's always uh, and and it's also an evolving thing and it never it never stops uh recording and it never stops transforming and and you know you find at the, you know, at the end of someone's life um the the things that they take with them are their body and their stories and they don't have materials around really unless well <laughs> the egyptians did they buried themselves with their <laughs> their riches <laughs> but in general you know you you you're you don't you don't really take that stuff with you you take your memories and and your connections that you've lived with people with you and and so that's the essence behind the project is and and each person when i'm drawing them that's what i'm trying to uh, absorb and and tap into and really kind of find the essence of them through that through what i've got the information so yeah i, I use a photo um i'll take it into photoshop and like and do some adjust adjustments um on the lighting maybe to kind of accentuate things here or there and um, create a mystery or you know whatever I want to whatever I see coming through them already from the, the the shot that I took and then I'll I'll go and explore in in the background I'll use the background as my kind of le less setting my imagination into action and and really you know that's where I'll bring the magic to the painting to the draw to the drawing um but there's be like sometimes some and some of them there's like little creatures that appear and and there's marks and and I'm really trying to play with the the two dimensional surface and um see what depth I can create what world I can create in inside of that and they're not very big they're only mm, fourteen by eleven, so you know they're not huge pieces of artwork and and that's where I'm finding that I'm getting to the stage where I want to include color and explore starting to paint um portraits and see what where where it will go with that and and maybe making them bigger and and seeing like where it goes from there but yeah that's uh i do use photography yeah, as my starting point and and the connection that i've lived with the people that i draw that i know but some of them have been commissioned like there was one that i was commissioned um who who was someone i was coaching when i was a a CrossFit coach and um, his wife, it, it, she died of cancer. She was working in the medical business. And so I never met her, but he commissioned me to, to draw four, uh, four drawings of, of her to give on to uh, her brothers and sisters. So, you know, just that in, its sto in a story as in itself is it's a, a beautiful story um, and an, a very interesting um, challenge to, to take on as well because you know i had to try and un see who she was he gave me some of her things some like things that were dear to her and just so i'd have them and, and around when i was doing the drawing he sent me he gave me a little booklet about her life and that they created when she when she passed away uh you know about her what she'd done and who she was and so on so there was um some information that i had to to go by and then just looking into her face and and seeing um you know who she was through like uh, he he sent me a whole mass of uh photographs to choose from of her um uh from various stages of her life and so I picked out four that came to me and and I took it from there but yeah so it's it's very uh, very diverse project um full of interesting discoveries <laughs> yeah you intrigued me and i'm mm -hmm. super interested to yeah. see what what comes out of it and if there's a way or a chance to, um, to to follow your work 
I mean, will you mm -hmm. add those pictures to your web page at some point? Yeah, they're, they're there. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're all they're in the project view section. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, it's still under development. The website. I haven't. I think some of them, a lot of the paintings, I haven't put titles or anything on yet. But um, the project you there's a there's some drawings there of that project and um, a description of the project. But there's actually a website that I'm building associated with that project on as a standalone website. Mm -hmm. So eventually there'll be you know a, you can click the button and it will take you to the website so it'll be a link between uh, my my art my artist official artist website and um and that that project website yeah super, super cool it was really really interesting and i want to be respectful of your time too is there, yeah we've is been there, going a long time eh? is there is there something else you want to to share about what you're working on like any anything else like projects products you want to share with the audience to whoever <laughs> is listening to this um or a message I think, yeah i think mostly i would just say i mean the projects i'm working on i'm working on moonfall at the moment which is a new uh, ronald, ronald Roland Emmerich movie um, and yeah I'm just uh, still developing Project U but in terms of uh, a message that I would leave for people really uh, em embrace your creativity really like try and explore it um, be be a friend with it you know it's, it's your friend it's there to to really uh, bring magic into your life and um, so yeah try and uh, be nice to it <laughs> and uh, and respect it. Just like embrace your creativity. Yeah, that's what I would say. Spend, give a... it and, and give time to, to spend with it because it's important. It'll enrich your life. <laughs> Dear Charlotte, thank you so much. It has been incredibly insightful. Mm -hmm. And thank you for inspiring us and helping us to understand <laughs> more about yeah, the creative yeah. expression and process. And, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and the show notes we will add your web page, your details for everybody mm -hmm. to ch check out and discover your art. Mm -hmm. And thank you for who you are, taking the time to <laughs> sharing your experience, your wisdom, your expertise with us. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, here at Beyond Perception, it's really about empowering people to live self-determined, free, and healthy lives. And it's a true honor to uh, to having met you and ha ha having had this conversation with you and um yeah being on this journey together looking mm -hmm. forward to to seeing you in the future again thank you yeah definitely thanks for inviting me it's been a pleasure having a talk about creativity <laughs> and other things <laughs>